Uh, in this video, we're going to introduce uh, complex numbers uh, by looking at uh, these two equations here. Um, so the first equation um, we can solve, we can find a solution. So uh, for now, we are going to be working in the real um, space of numbers or real set of numbers. So for the first equation, we've got p squared minus 25 equal to 0. Now uh, if we take 25 to the right hand side, so p squared is uh, 25. Now if we take square roots on both sides, left hand side is going to be p. The right hand side is going to be plus or minus square root of 25 uh, square root 25 is 5 so this uh, equation is going to have two solutions one of them is plus 5 and the other one is minus 5 now turning um, to the other uh, equation in B got P squared plus 4 equal to 0 so this time, if we take um, 4 to the other side, we have got uh, p squared is negative 4. Then if we take square roots, then we now have a problem. Because in the real set of numbers, we don't do square root of negative numbers. So then we conclude uh, there is no real solution. Okay. So this statement, there is no real solution, is actually giving us a hint that perhaps if we get a set of numbers bigger than real numbers, there could be a solution. And this is where complex numbers come in. So, um, here is the game changer. Uh, so, we are going to introduce uh, a number called i. Um, and uh, this number is, uh, is called the unit imaginary number. So, if it is imaginary... So that is already telling you that it is not real. So I is uh, the unit imaginary number. Uh, it is defined as the square root of negative 1. So straight away, uh, the definition of I is saying we are doing uh, the sort of thing which we said we cannot do if we are in the real set of numbers because we said we do not do square root of negative numbers. So if uh, i is uh, the square root of negative 1, we're just going to do a few powers of i here. So i squared is going to be negative 1 if you square both sides of this. And then i cubed, uh, we can write that one as i squared times i. But i squared, we just said, is negative 1. So i cubed, we can write as negative i. So straight away, you can see that this number i has got some interesting um, characteristics i to the power 4, we can write as i squared times i squared. i squared, we say, uh, is negative 1. So this is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. So i to the power 4 is 1. Okay. So this is fascinating. We could go on and do i to the power 5 i to the power 6, i to the power 7, etc., which we will do in a subsequent uh, video. 
uh, but for now we're just going to go back to our equation uh, here which we said does not have a solution so um, with I in the picture then uh, this is what we can do uh, for that equation so P is plus or minus a negative 4 we can write as a plus or minus so the plus or minus square root negative 4 we can write as plus or minus square root 4 times square root negative 1 of course square root 4 is 2 and from what we've just said uh, square root ne negative 1 is i so that means so uh, these are the two solutions um, of p squared plus 4 equal to 0 okay of course these solutions are not real so um so of course the question is well can we prove that these are solutions of this equation and uh, the answer is yes we can so we're actually going to um, demonstrate this by substituting so first of all let's uh, substitute p is equal to 2i in this equation so we're going to have 2i all squared plus 4 if this is a solution then that thing should work out to 0 2i is the same as 2 squared times i squared plus 4 2 squared is 4i squared is negative 1 so this is negative 4 plus 4 this is 0 so 2i is indeed a solution well how about um, um negative 2i so because we're saying these are the two solutions so if p is negative i when we do the substitution we've got negative 2i squared plus 4 so this time we can write this as negative 2 squared times i squared plus 4 but we know that negative 2 squared is positive 4 and i squared is negative 1 still so this is negative 4 plus 4 this is 0 so this one is also a solution so this number i is uh, going to be uh, an interesting uh, number to have it's definitely a game changer in terms uh, of uh, enabling us to find some solutions um, solutions of equations that we couldn't uh, solve before right however um, the this section is entitled complex numbers so with i in the picture we're now going to define a complex number so with i in the picture we're going to define a complex number so and uh, it uh, the definition goes as follows so the quantity uh, z equals to x plus i y so here x and y are real numbers and i is the unit imaginary number as we just um, defined then um, z is now called a complex number it is called a complex number um, so this 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 whole thing here is a complex number um, the x um, is called the real part is x x is called the real part uh, of uh, z um, 
denoted as follows. So x is denoted uh, re of z. Okay, so this is the real part. And then y is called the imaginary part. Okay, y is the imaginary part um y is called the imaginary part denoted uh, as follows i am of z so the coefficient of i is the imaginary part okay this this part of the definition uh, is uh, if you like uh, a bit uh, counterintuitive because we have just said that y is a real number but um, that is the technical um, definition of i so it's just the coefficient of your sorry the technical definition of the imaginary part which is going to be the coefficient of your um of your i in the complex number z okay so we are now going to look at uh, a few examples uh by the way thank you for visiting our uh, channel and uh, we hope this video and uh, the others in general are useful please do not forget to press the subscribe button if you've got any questions you can post them in the comment section and uh, of course, please do like the video and share accordingly. So now for a few examples before we come to the conclusion of the video. All right. Uh, so in this set of examples, we're given a complex number Z. We want to find the real part and want to find the imaginary part. Now from our notes here, the real part it's just going to be your x and the imaginary part is your y y is the coefficient of i and x is uh, the component of z that does not involve i so that means for a uh, that is going to be our real part so x is going to be 2 coefficient of i is 3 so the imaginary part is 3 and then for b the real part is uh, negative 4 the imaginary part Coefficient of i here is 1. Okay. For c, the real part is going to be 0 here. So this is going to be the same as 0 minus 8i. So x is 0. The imaginary part is negative 8, which is the coefficient of i. For D, the real part is 3. The imaginary part is 0. Because this is the same as plus 0i. So y is going to be 0. Um, okay, uh, at this point, we're going to give you the opportunity to have a code E, F, G, and H. Just want to pause the video, have a go at those ones. Then when you continue the video, you can compare with our solutions. All right. Um, so for E, uh, the real part is going to be negative uh, 4. Um, and uh, the imaginary part is 5. For F, uh, real part is minus 12. Imaginary part is minus 7. For G, real part is 0, imaginary part is 13. 
for h real part is minus 20 imaginary part is zero right thank you